Hello friends, I am Sunil sir and I am back with a new video. Friends, in this video we are going to discuss about sub-aerial modification of the stem. Stem normally trails on the soil and it is sometimes found partially beneath the soil. Then it is sub-aerial modification. It remains in contact with air as well as soil. Stem they modify only for perination and vegetative reproduction. The very first example of sub-aerial modification is runner. Runners, they are special narrow green horizontal and prostrate branches means they run parallel to the soil surface they develop from the base of erect shoot called as crown the numbers of runners arises from each crown means the point from where it will arise is called as crown it will spread in all directions having nodes and internodes nodes they will bear two things scaly leaves and axillary bud example for runner we have lawn grass that is Cynodon dactylon and we have hydrocotyle which is Centella asiatica and one more example is there that is oxalis. If I draw the diagram, this diagram that you are seeing is technically crown and from this crown different directions the grasses will grow. So these are the runners. So when we talk about runner they have a common point but what happens if they break from the crown? Nothing will happen because they have their own root. They have their own leaf so they will grow into a new plant and that each plant will act as a crown so example for this we have oxalis so we have adventitious root we have the nodes then we have the internodes these are the leaves so remember runner they are partially below the soil and they are partially above the soil at nodes they are attached to the soil surface second example that we have in subaerial modification is the stolon which is slender lateral branch that arises from the base of main axis. Initially what happens, the stolon grows vertically upward. Then it bends and touches the soil. It has a terminal bud at the tip of the stem that gives rise to new shoot and even adventitious shoot. Examples that we have for stolon is jasmine, mentha, strawberry and colocasia. When we talk about this, take a look at this. This is the diagram, underground stolon. Then little bit it comes above the soil surface. And this is the soil. So in stolon, this is the soil surface where some part is below the soil and some part is above the soil. This is sub-aerial modification that we normally see in case of stem. These are the roots and the roots that are present is adventitious root. So the one which is joining the two is called as stolon. Let us draw the plant. So these are the different branches that are arising from the underground part of the stem. And the aerial part is the stolon. These are the leaves. So stolon, remember, it has very short distance between the two main part of the stem. And they are joined to each other by the help of stolon. So this part is called as stolon and these are the adventitious root. So the example for stolon remember it is jasmine, mentha, strawberry and colocasia. The next example that we have in under sub aerial modification is the offset. Offset they are commonly called as runners but they are aquatic runners means they will run below the or on the surface of water not like the normal grass. They are shorter and thicker than the runners. It helps in vegetative propagation. Means spreading from one place to the another in the aquatic condition. Example for offset we have water hyacinth. Water hyacinth was also called as a terror of Bengal. Even Jalkumbi, Icornia and Pisti are the examples. Water hyacinth was introduced in India because of its beautiful coloration and the shape of the leaf. But later on it created a havoc. It started spreading at such a high rate that it has affected the water oxygen level. And as a result now it is the biggest problem in India. That is water ice and terror of Bengal. Why it is called as terror? Because it not only consumes the water. It also it consumes all the oxygen of the water. And it results in the death of the aquatic animals. So the two part which is joining is called as offset. Next example that we have student is called as suckers. The suckers they are runner like non green branches which develops from the axil of the scaly leaves. It grows horizontally below the soil surface 
बट आफ्टर ट्रैवलिंग सम डिस्टेंस इट कम्स अब द सॉइल ऑब्लिकली सो सकर्स बेसिकली दे आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज अंडरग्राउंड रनर्स सो सकर्स दे ट्रैवल हॉरिजोंटली बिलो द सॉइल सर्फेस बट दे कम ऑब्लिकली अप एग्जाम्पल बनाना मिंट क्रिसेंथम मिंट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज पुदीना लेट्स ड्रॉ वन डायग्राम ऑफ द सकर सो दिस इज द अंडरग्राउंड स्टेम दिस इज ग्रोइंग हॉरिजोंटली बिलो द सॉइल सर्फेस एंड देन फाइनली इट कम्स ऑब्लिकली above the soil surface so sucker this diagram is of mint so suckers are also a kind of runner but they are underground runner so we have three types of runner normal runner then aquatic runner and we have underground runner so this part is called as sucker and the example is mint which is also known as pudina let's talk about aerial modification now here nothing will be related to the ground everything will come above the soil surface student so stem here modifies to form aerial structure also called as metamorphosis stem because the stem modifies in such a way that you cannot identify its stem example is first modification stem tendrils what are tendrils tendrils are leafless coiled structure with some sensitive adhesive glands for fixation axillary bud modifies to form a thin wiry structure which is highly sensitive structure and that sensitive structure is called as tendril so this is the axillary bud this axillary bud will modify itself into spring like structure like this which is called as tendril so remember students tendril helps the plant to attach itself to another plant so that they can grow they can move towards the sunlight because the stem of actual plant is very weak so the axillary bud modifies into tendril so that they can take the support and they can grow look here this is one of the example where the axillary bud is modifying into tendril just to take the support and grow so this is one of the modification the of tendril it is seen in case of passiflora let's see the next modification so here you can see the nodes and the internodes from the nodes what arises is one leaf now this node at the tendrils are formed from the apical bud it is seen in case of whitest so white is such growth is called as sympodial growth because the tendril pulls the stem towards itself sometime the extra axillary bud modifies into tendril and the example for this is cucurbita so here you can see apart from axillary bud there is one more bud called as extra axillary bud and this extra axillary bud modifies into tendril we have the next floral bud so sometimes the flower the bud which develops into flower will modify into tendril an example for this is antigonon one of the most important example that we should know tendrils after that we have thorn a thorn the stem if it modifies into thorns it is only for two reason one reason can be to avoid the loss of water by transpiration or second reason can be to protect themselves from browsing animals so thorns are hard pointed usually straight structure they are produced by modification of axillary bud the leaves branches and the flowers are developed on the thorn only at the node it's seen for protection against browsing animals the common example for thorn we have citrus duranta and bougainvillea carissa in carissa the apical bud modifies into thorn but in rest of the plant we will see that the axillary bud modifies into thorn so remember students if the stem modifies into thorn it is for only two reason one is to protect themselves from browsing animals second to prevent the loss of water by transpiration the example that we see here is duranta and it has the axillary bud which is getting modified into thorn the next modification that we have is phylloclad so in phylloclad which is also called as cladophyll it is a stem which gets transformed into a leaf like structure and since the actual leaf becomes very small this stem starts doing photosynthesis so i can say phylloclad is a green flattened stem with a distinct node and internode they are thick they are fleshy and they are succulent when i say succulent it means they store water just to avoid any harsh condition example for phylloclad we have aponsia which is cactus nagfani casuarina euphorbia and even mullein bacchia so if i draw one phylloclad we can draw the example of cactus in cactus what happens the stem becomes green 
and fleshy and it does the function of photosynthesis but the leaves they get modified or they get reduced into spines and these spines they protect themselves from excess transpiration and even from browsing animals so this is one of the example of aerial modification seen in case of stem phylloclad next example that we have the cactus mostly it is seen in desert area and that's why they are forced to store water in the form of mucilage so leaves they modify themselves into spines last modification second last modification is cladod cladod is green branch of limited growth so here there is a stem only which is getting modified it takes the function of again photosynthesis why again just to reduce the loss of water by transpiration here actual true leaves are reduced to spines example for this we have asparagus so this is the diagram for cladod these are the young stem which have taken the function of photosynthesis this is the spine and this is the cladod the role of cladod is to prevent the loss of water by transpiration and even it gives protection from browsing animals last example that we have is bulbel in bulbel the axillary bud becomes fleshy rounded due to storage of food here it gets detached once it has grown up in size it falls down and grows into a new plant so this is for perination example dioscorea hope friends you have understood the stem modifications in the next video i will be talking about leaf till then this is sunil sir thank you very much